still stand up when I'm usually sitting down. If I'm in a crowded space and you ask me to spin around, if I'm by myself or in a room of thousands, <laughs> the answer is still yeah. Another song I'll sing A different melody If you ask of me I'll do it A higher hand I'll raise Explode with joy, just pray Until the whole ground shakes I'll do it But because this is what you deserve It's my pleasure to please you Let me show you your worth a stranger and you invited me in I was sick and you looked after me I needed a teacher and you inspired me I was lost and you prayed for me I was addicted, and you helped me break free. I needed a mentor, and you were there for me. I felt alone, and you showed me true community. You helped me experience the joy of worship. You made me feel welcome and safe. You gave me the strength to keep going. You led me to Jesus. upon you. For behold, the darkness 
darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to, the, to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all, they all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from afar, and your daughters shall be nursed at your side. That was Isaiah 61 through 5. Let's bless the name of the Lord for his word. For his word is living, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. The word of God changes. The word of God is a mirror that you can look in. And if you see a speck in your soul, you can wipe it with the word. The word washes. It cleanses. It's a powerful thing. Hallelujah. So, Father God, we bless you. We honor you, King of glory. For there is none like you, God. We bow before you, prostrate before you, hands raised before you, dancing before you, because you are great and greatly to be praised, Lord. And there is none like you. So have your way in this place, Lord. We honor you. Like none other God. Oh, we bless your name, Jesus. Oh, have your way. Come in the temple, Jesus, as you did, Lord God. Flip over the table. Destroy everything that's not like you. Bring the church back to you, God. Bring us all back to you, Lord God. Have your way, Lord. Expose, Lord, every spirit that's not like you. The Sadducee spirit. The Pharisee spirit, God. Expose everything that's not like you, Lord God. And have your way, Lord Jesus. For we honor and we praise your holy name, Lord. Oh God, oh Father, while the world is worrying about, Lord God, what color you are. We don't care what color you are, God. All we care about is the blood. The blood of Jesus that washes and cleanses that red blood, that purging blood, Lord God. Oh, Shandi Basukura Basaya. Oh, we bless your name, Asha. Le Baronda Bosonda La Basaya. Oh, God, have your way in this place, God. Oh, Father God, prepare us. Allah Boshanda Bosaya. That we may call, Lord God, all those that are lost in and drawn out in the world, God. Call them from the north, the south, the east, and the west, God. Blow winds of heaven and blow all the lost back into the house of God as a matter of fact God oh God we ought to go out into the world and preach your gospel oh father God prepare us that we may go out God and bring them in and not just wait God for them to come in the house 
place and have your way, King Jesus. We praise you. We honor and adore you, Lord, like none other. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody just give God praise right where you are. Come on. Don't be afraid. Lift up your hands. Open up your mouth and just begin to say something sweet to your Savior. Father, we exalt you. Father, we praise you. We want to worship you. There's nobody like you, Lord. You're wonderful. Hallelujah. Nobody like it. 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 N
to give God worship. Begin to open up your mouth wherever you're at right now. Begin to lift up your hands. Because <laughs> it's only you inside your room, right? It's only you inside your house. It's only you and probably some other people, but this is the time for you and God. And we're just going to make some declarations that there are some mountains in our lives that need to be torn down. That there are some things that might have been blocking us. <laughs> But we're going to tear those things down even now in this song. So I just want you guys to just get your mind in a place that as we're lifting up our God, he's moving mountains. As we are lifting up our God, he's making ways. As we're lifting up our God, he's giving us words to speak to the things that are blocking us. And we thank you, God. We lift you up, we lift you up, and we magnify you, we magnify, he is, he is my faithful father, calling me out of the dark, and I cannot whisper away what he said in the light. He is my firm foundation. My anchor won't be moved. The storms may collide, the storms may collide but my soul is on fire with his word. Come 
say when listen to when listen to the sound of power on my lips Jesus Jesus has broken the curse he has never lost a battle
Shabbat, I'm, I'm making room for you to release something that you've never released before. I'm making room for you right now in your worship, in your praise, because he never lost a battle. 
I don't know what battle, I don't know what fight that you win, but God wants me to confirm to you that you are a winner, you are a champion, you will not lose this battle because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Now open up your mouth if you believe you are a winner. If you believe you are a winner, open up your mouth on the sixth month of 2020 and give God glory. He never lost a battle from Genesis to Revelation. Never lost, not one fight, not one battle, not one case. Open up your mouth and give, uh, uh, and give God glory right now. You got 60 seconds to make up your mind to give him praise. You are a winner. You are a winner. You will win. You will win. You will win. You will win. Hallelujah. He never lost. From Genesis, he never lost. To Revelation, he never lost. And he's not about to lose with you. He's not about to lose with you. He's not about to lose with you. Oh, you never lost in battle. You serve a faithful God. You serve a mighty God. You serve a big God. He never lost. Hey, glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Let the redeemer of the Lord say so. Wherever you are, come on, give him glory. I know you're in a fight. I know you're in a battle. But he's about to speak over your life and say, Peace be still. Oh, they're both silent. For our God is our refuge and strength a very present help in time of trouble. Peace be still. He's gonna speak to the storm. He's gonna speak to cancer. He's gonna speak to You can't lose. Not with God on your side. You can't lose. Cause God has too much invested in you for you to lose this battle. He never lost a battle. What an amazing God we serve. Psalm 46 says, God is our refuge and strength. Very present help. Time of trouble. Uh, don't let the trouble intimidate you. Uh, you are well covered. You are well covered. It's your refuge and also strength. And a very present help in time of trouble. Salute you. I believe that God has awesome things in store for you. You can't lose hope. Faith is the substance of things so far and the evidence of things not seen. You made it to the sixth month of this year where you should have died, where she, where you should have died on the third month. Some of you should have died on the second month. Some of you should have died on the fourth month. So God deserves all your praise. Wherever you are, I'm inviting you to clap your hands and give Jesus a praise. Wherever you are, that you made it to June 2020 and you're going to make it to July 2020. You're going to make it to August 2020. Uh, hallelujah. That no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. So honored to be in the house of God. And God is doing awesome things and amazing things in our lives. And we're so grateful for the things of the Lord. God is so faithful. Even when we are not faithful, he remains faithful. So I'm so grateful for what God is doing. This is the Lord's doing. Bible says that I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. So I invite you to the house of the Lord and I'm so grateful for our online virtual audience. I'm so grateful for our Raymond Light Church family. I can't wait to fellowship with you. I can't wait to um, hug on you. I believe that this too shall pass. So I want to welcome you to the best season of your life that eyes have not seen, ears haven't heard. Neither has it entered the heart of man what God has in store for your life. I want to salute our chief apostle, Dr. Todd M. Hall, our bishop, my pastor, my bishop, my chief apostle. And I also want to give God praise for our co-pastor, first lady, 
hallelujah and we'll give our continually give God continuously give God honor for the best church in the world Rama Life Church if you can turn your Bible quickly with me to the book of 2nd Samuel 6 2nd Samuel 6 and verse 6 to verse 7 I'm so grateful for our media ministry, so grateful for our praise and worship ministry, so grateful for what God is doing. God is not through blessing you. I want you to put it on the comments. God is not through blessing me. God has more things in store for your life. I want to introduce you guys to our summer series and I should have preached this the beginning of the 2020 but god had me um reserve it for the summer he says i want you to release this the summer of 2020 is called unbothered unbothered and that's going to be our summer series unbothered i refuse to step out of line because when god is taking me i need to stay in line with what god is doing if you can turn with me quickly, quickly to the book of 2 Samuel 6, verse 6. 2 Samuel 6, verse 6 to 7. And when they had, and when they came to Nacon's fresh and floor, and when they came to Nacon's fresh and floor, Uzzah put out his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it. Uzzah put out his hands and took hold of the ark of God, for the oxen stumbled. Then the anger of the Lord was aroused against Uzzah, and God struck him there for his error. And he died there by the ark of God. He died there by the ark of God, the word of the Lord. Father, I thank you. I decrease to release so you may increase completely. Have your way in this place. Thank you for this opportunity to teach and preach your word. And I pray that you will give us the spirit that will make preaching and teaching easy. Father, we dismantle and destroy every demonic assignment against this word, against this move of God. Father, we release your spirit even through the avenue of media release your spirit your tangible spirit let your spirit be relevant let your spirit be tangible do a new thing father for you said we ought not to remember the former things or consider the things of old have your way i decrease totally you may increase completely speak to us for father for we are here to be empowered by your living truth we thank you for what you have done and thank you for what you're getting ready to do for the next phase of 2020 for we understand that we are overcomers you say greater is he that is inside of us than he that is in the world you say in romans 8 31 if god before us who can be against us and father we thank you for what you're getting ready to do stretch us do a new thing with us push us to our next level bring us to our next dimension and we thank you for this graduation we thank you for this elevation we thank you for this promotion in jesus name we pray have your way holy spirit amen hallelujah unbothered 2020 unbothered 2020 we have to understand brothers and sisters the proper the proper comprehension or the proper understanding of whom god has called us to be or whom god has uh, called us to do we have to really understand that it is imperative that we grasp that, we embrace that, that when God has called you to be and what God has called you to do is going to save your life. Once you understand when God has called you to be and understand what God has called you to do, is going to save your life and produce much peace and as you move forward into your God-given destiny we have to get a hold of whom God has called you to be you have to get a hold of what God has called you to do because that will produce much peace as you move forward into 
your God-given destiny. There is this peace that comes in knowing who you are in Christ. Let me say that again. There is this peace that comes in knowing who you are in Christ. When, when you come to the full circle of the will of God for your life, is simply the best thing that can happen to you when you come to the paradigm shift that full circle God has called you to do and what God whom God has called you to be and what God has called you to do and you know the will of God for your life it will produce so much peace we have to understand when you finally uh, shift from being what we call a people pleaser to a God pleaser, then and only then you will be able to make powerful impact when you move from being a people pleaser to a God pleaser. Only then you will have impact, you will make powerful impact in this world. Knowing who you are in Christ secures your destiny and eliminates the space for confusion and distraction. Let me say that again. Knowing who you are in Christ secures your destiny and it eliminates the space for confusion and distraction. When you fully embrace that identity which is in Christ, you can now move out of performance-based mindset to being purpose driven when you fully embrace when you know your identity when you know who you are in Christ I am alive in Christ I am redeemed in Christ I am well in Christ you know who you are you are secure in your identity uh, not just in you in Christ uh, now you are positioned now you have to understand your opposition from being performance based to uh, what we call purpose driven you learn how to do things not for the approval of others, but you learn how to, not, not even for self glorification but you learn how to do things for the glory of God. Paul says, and I quote, he says, do everything for the glory of God. So that, that level of freedom enables us to be free from people's opinion concerning you. When you get to a place in Christ that you are, you know who you are and when you get to a place in Christ where you're not seeking for approval, when you get to a place in Christ you are not seeking for self-glorification, when you get to a place in Christ you are no longer performance based but you are, you are driven you are purposely driven. You are no longer performing. You're not doing things to get approval, but you are doing things because this is the right thing to do. This is what God has called you to do. There is this freedom that comes with that. The restriction of being unbothered, the restriction or the limitation of being unbothered can be labeled often as selfish. It can often sometimes be labeled as insensitive. When you are unbothered by people, sometimes people label you as insensitive. You can be labeled as you have no sensitivity, you have no compassion, and because I am unbothered. But we, we are not selfish. It's not because we are insensitive. It's not because we are selfish. We have to understand certain things are out of our reach and we have to be at peace that certain things uh, it's not it's none of our business and it's okay when, when you are busy with God and you are busy doing life with God you ain't got time to be in people's business uh, let me say that again when you are busy with God you ain't got time to be in people's business I am unbothered I, I, I'm in my lane you are in your lane you are doing you in the will of God I'm doing me in the will of God when you are 
preoccupied with the things of God. You have no time left to be involved in people drama and people's business because I am purpose driven. You are purpose driven. You have a destination ahead of you and you cannot stop. Churchill says you cannot. Winston Churchill he says you cannot stop and throw rocks at every dog that barks because you are focused. You are going somewhere. My God I, I, I came here to dismantle the culture of distraction over your life. I, I came here to restore not your cons, cons, uh, natural con, uh, cons, uh, consecration but I came here to restore the spirit of concentration uh, over your life that you need uh, to be focused. What God is getting ready to do, what God is about to take you, uh, there is a level of focus that you need. So he says, Churchill, he says, I can't stop and throw uh, rocks at every dog that barks because I am purpose driven. I am going somewhere. I have a destiny to get. Uh, I, I, to, I, I have a place that I'm trying to go to. Uh, so I can't stop. I can't allow distraction to slow me down. I am on bothered my god uh, paul says it and i'm gonna go paul paul says it in first corinthians 10 uh, the 23rd uh, verse he says all things are lawful but not all things uh, are beneficial uh, in other words just because i can do it uh, doesn't mean i should do it you, you you gotta reserve your energy in 2020 uh, certain things just because you have the permission to do it doesn't mean that you have been called to do it doesn't mean that you have to do it you have a responsibility uh, to establish proper boundaries in 2020 in your life uh, you desire to graduate to your next level uh, you gotta have proper protocols you you you, you can't be too naive you 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 can't be too gullible you 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 can't have uh, uh, you can't have too much too many open doors you you have to mark your territory my god you, you cannot be everything for everyone and, and and that's the problem with some of us who are watching you are trying so hard to be everything to everyone you have to be secure in whom god has called you to be you have to be at peace which you're calling you have to be at Peace. with your uh, with, with your anointing you have to be at peace uh, with your assignment you have to be at peace uh, with your swag you gotta be at peace uh, with your style you have to be secure uh, in whom God uh, has called you uh, to be uh, and what happened to some of us you are continuously being drained uh, because you are overly committed uh, to nonsense my God uh, you are overly uh, committed to nonsense you, you you are overly committed uh, to ungod uh, to ungodly assignments you, you you are overly committed to things that god uh, has not called you to do uh, you are overly committed to relationships and covenants uh, that god uh, has not assigned to you uh, oh my god uh, and that's why this season uh, you gotta take the next six month of 2020 to reset the year because i refuse to waste my my time on things that God has not called me to do. My God, let me say that again. I refuse to waste my time in things that God has not called me to do. So you got to take the month of June. You got to take the rest of this year and reset certain things and use wisdom because when God is about to take me, I have to use wisdom. I have to be at a place where where I am connected to those things that he has called me to do. So some people are only connected to you. You have to understand that some are only connected to you because of what you can offer. 
because of what you can uh, offer them but they they care less about you uh, and here you are wasting your time here, here you are wasting your energy and here you are wasting resources uh, because you have a void but this year uh, God is challenging you uh, to be on bothered you got to preserve your anointing you you got to preserve your sanity you you've got to preserve your resources there is a greater purpose uh, waiting on the other side for your life uh, and you cannot afford uh, to get there empty uh, and what happened when you waste your resources you waste uh, your energy you waste your anointing you waste your time by the time you get to the next season of your life now you are completely empty out of resources out of potential out of anointing because you wasted your time I want you to put on those comments those of us who are watching online say I want you to put on those comments say I can't afford to waste my time because I am doing life with God I am purpose driven I am destiny focused you cannot afford to waste your time so here in our text brothers and sisters what are you saying to us pastor here in our text brothers and sisters we are dealing with a movement we are dealing with a movement we are dealing with what we call a modern movement here in 2020 which is the transportation of the ark of god the ark of god which is a representation of the presence of god which is a representation of the favor of god which is a representation of the purpose of god is being transported my god the ark of god which is a representation of the presence of god which is a representation of the favor of god which is a representation of the purpose of god is now being transported so now david is transporting the ark from one location to another oh where are my students here so the ark is a representation of the presence of god remember the ark is a representation of the presence of god so the first thing that god wants me to address in the series called unbothered we have to be extremely careful how we handle his presence uh, my god uh, remember the ark is a representation uh, of the presence of god uh, he says i want you to tell them uh, that they have to be extremely careful uh, for the rest of 2020 uh, on how they handle uh, my presence my god uh, and he says not only uh, they gotta be careful on how they handle my presence they have to be careful on how they handle handle my favor uh, the favor of God is not given uh, for you to waste uh, let me say that again uh, the favor of God uh, is not given for you to be negligent uh, the favor of God is not given to you uh, for you to waste uh, the presence of God is not given to you uh, for you to waste uh, so if we are going to see a move uh, of God uh, we have to be careful uh, on how we handle the presence of God now can I talk to my 2020 church because it seems like there's this negligence there's this lace affair when it comes to handling the presence of God in our generation and God said my glory will not be revealed until this generation learn how to appreciate my presence my God oh I wish I had a church up in here we gotta go back to the days uh, where we had the fear of God in church. Uh, oh Jesus I done, I done lost you right now. Uh, we gotta go back to the days uh, where we had reverence uh, for the things of God. Uh, so remember the ark is a representation uh, of the presence of God. Uh, so what's been going on in our churches? Uh, we got people uh, playing with the presence uh, of God. My God I wish I had a church up in here. Uh, we got preachers uh, playing uh, with the presence of God. Uh, we have apostles uh, playing.
in with the presence of God. And in this season called unbothered, God said, please tell them they have to be extremely careful on how they handle my presence. It seems like there's no fear of the Lord within the walls of the church. It seems like we can do whatever in the in the name of grace. But we have to understand that grace is not a license to sin. Oh my God. Grace is the fact that I embrace his love and I know it. I fell short and I made a decision in my mind. I made a decision in my heart not to go there again. So what we do, we use grace and we mishandle God's presence. Uh, we mismanage his favor uh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus uh, we mismanage the favor of God so there are two things we gotta pause here uh, mishandling his presence uh, and the mismanagement of his favor so we have to be careful how we mishandle his presence and how we mismanage my God Oh Jesus, how we mismanage his favor. Oh God, I'm out of resources. No, you waste those resources. <laughs> uh, I'm out of money. You wasted the money. He says, This is the season that I'm calling people into accountability who mishandle my presence. We cannot call sin sin, we cannot call sin a situation. That's a mishandling his presence. Uh, we got to call things for what they are. Uh, Jesus, I lost the church right now. Uh, so he says, you can mishandle my presence. So the ark is a representation uh, of the presence of God. And the ark is a representation of the favor of God. And number three, Sylvia, the ark is a representation of the purpose of God. Uh, so when you mishandle the purpose that God has for your life, uh, you mishandle God. Uh, Jesus. Uh, so there are three things that's going on in the sex. Uh, they are mishandling the presence of God. Uh, they are mishandling the favor of God. Uh, and they are mishandling uh, the purpose of God. So the ark is being transported. It's being transported from one location to another location. Uh, and he said, what, what, what you got to tell them? What I want you to tell them, and I want you to tell them that not every move is a move of God. Uh, Jesus. He said, not every move, not every, re not every revival is reviving souls. Not, not every move is a move of God. God sent me here to dismantle every demonic move in your life. Jesus. Oh, the ark is being moved. Oh my God. Let's celebrate. Let's give God glory. But, but not every movement is a move of God. Uh, so here we understand that the ark is being transported uh, to a new location uh, but not with the right direction. Uh, Jesus. Uh, the ark is being transported uh, to a new location uh, but not with the right direction. Uh, we can all agree that the king, uh, uh, the king's intention uh, behind this move is right. Uh, but the protocol behind it is off. Uh, Jesus. Jesus. Uh, he's doing the right thing. Uh, He's not doing an evil thing. He's moving the ark from one location to another location. So uh, there's no harm in this. Uh, and we learned last Sunday, last Sunday that intentions are not enough. Uh, when it comes to the things of God. My God, Paul says, let all things be done decently and in order so good intention should never replace protocol good intentions should never replace protocol when you are out of protocol you are out of alignment uh, when you are out of protocol you are in disobedience my god but i'm 
doing a good thing. Uh, uh, Amaziah did the right thing, but not with a loyal heart. Uh, oh my God. Uh, just having the right intention uh, is not enough. Uh, because every assignment given by God uh, comes with a manual. Jesus, I ain't going to say, uh, I ain't going to get a lot of amen for this one. Uh, every assignment given by God uh, is given with a manual. Ask Noah. Jesus. Uh, the Bible says that Noah, uh, the ark builder, uh, he did everything according to what God uh, has commended him to do. Uh, half obedience uh, is still disobedient. My God, Jesus Christ. Uh, and a lot of us, we try to do this thing halfway. Uh, we try to do this walk in, the, in our style. We, we try to do this thing uh, the way we want to do it. Uh, but Noah did uh, according to everything that God uh, has commanded him to do. Uh, Jesus. Uh, so we cannot reject the manual uh, and wonder why success is absent in our journey. Uh, oh God. Uh, I feel this word. Uh, you cannot reject the manual uh, and wonder why uh, it's false falling apart. The answer that you are looking for is not in the mouth of a prophet but is in the mouth of the manual. Oh, Jesus. And some of you are looking for a prophetic word where you should be looking for a directive word. How to, oh Jesus God. So we are looking for the next prophet where you should be looking for the next protocol. Oh God I'm messing up with the, with the pentagon Pentecostal church and the problem is we want success without the manual we want success with our protocol we want success with our principle oh God God told Joshua now let me leave Noah alone God told Joshua God said Joshua the son of Nun from the tribe of Ephraim Jesus God said Joshua listen now is your season you are not next you are now so what I I want you to do get up get up and lead this people to a place across over the Jordan but there is a principle there is a protocol with the prophetic word and the protocol was this is what you're gonna do Joshua the book of the law shall not depart from your mouth as a matter of fact you meditate on this word day and also night not just when you are preaching not just when you are in church this word gotta be your lifestyle you meditate on this word day and night and then after meditation comes manifestation he says then the next word he attached to Joshua was the word success and a lot of us we want to have success with our protocol he says if you meditate on this word the word meditate means to say it to dwell to munch to eat that word to chew on the word over and over and over and over he says then you will have success uh, so we have to understand when you can reject when you uh, uh, when uh, Jesus uh, some of you, you you're not gonna uh, you're not gonna like this you can't reject the method and yet expect manifestation uh, because manifestation is in the method uh, Jesus manifestation uh, is in your manual huh? Lord have mercy huh? so David here huh, is doing a major assignment huh, with incompetent resources Teach this, sir. he's doing something good I'm getting the ark out of the hood, out of the hood. I, I'm taking the ark out of the hood and I'm bringing the ark to a suburban place that's a great job David Praise the Lord. <laughs> you know what? I'm, I, I'm, I'm throwing a praise party for God. Mm -hmm. uh, so David here is doing a major assignment with minor preparation, with incompetent resources. So, uh, so, so David wants major results with mediocrity, with, with mediocre methods. He wants major results 
with mediocre methods. Uh, David wants major success with mediocre methods. Jesus, like some of us who are trying to do big things with basic people. Come on, sir. Jesus, you're trying to do godly thing with carnal people. How are you going to have godly results with carnal methods? Come on, sir. Flesh gives birth to flesh. So you're trying to birth something in the spirit, but in a carnal way. Come on, sir. Ah, Jesus. You're trying to do a spiritual thing, but in a, in a, in a, in a carnal swag. So David said, you know what? Let's get the ark of God, which is representation of the presence of God, the favor of God, and the purpose of God. We're going to get the ark out, and we're going to bring it to another place, but in our style. And our methods, improper methods, always lead to embarrassment. Always. When you don't follow the protocol, it's always going to lead you to embarrassment. So as they, you try to do big things, or oh, the Lord has come to do big things, but you have mediocre resources, incompetent resources. Uh, you're not doing it the Lord's way. Imagine Noah saying, let's build this ark. Let's build the ark, praise the Lord. And not God for wood. Let's take whatever wood we get. Uh, it had to be a specific wood. Uh, because when you study God for wood, the study reveals that it kills the smell. Oh, the wood was a preparation. Uh, for what's going on inside of the ark. Mm. It kills all types of smell. Because in the ark we have all types of animal. Yeah. And they stayed there for a long time. Yeah. So imagine. He says you know what. I don't want God for wood. I'm a Brazilian wood. And find out. That your methods. Can handle the storm. Wow. Because he only knew that what God told him worked is when the rain came. You don't know if you're in real obedience once the text come. So imagine Noah was like, you know what? Let's do the ark. And God said, you know what? I want it to be 40 feet. And no, let's do it 10 feet. You say yes to God. But you say yes to God in a mediocre fashion. Mm. You didn't say yes to God in excellence. And a lot of us, we move in a mediocre style. But the Bible says that nobody did according to everything. I was commended. Oh, you know what? I didn't like this season. I'm going to take this out. You can't take it out. Obedience is doing the whole thing. So, they are transporting the ark. The Bible says the oxen stumbled. So, you gotta ask God, what is the real reason behind this interruption in my life? Because suddenly, things were moving, and then there's a stop. And you call the oxen demonic. You call the oxen, this is the witch, the warlock, and you cursing you. You cursing them, you playing the, you playing the blood of Jesus. The oxen is actually your wake up call to bring you back to alignment. To the original plan that God had for you. Some of us, you got to give God praise for the oxen in your life that stopped you. On, Even though you lost a leg, you lost an arm, you lost a house, but you didn't go to hell. The oxen is a season, a moment of reflection of, listen, you are going too far. So this divine interruption in the text, the Bible says that the oxen 
stumbled. Uh, when the oxen stumbled while they were transporting, why I'm doing this great thing for you, God, and then you're going to send this interruption. Have you ever been at a place with God? You feel like you are doing it right, and suddenly there's an interruption, and then you go back to your devil mode. And is the devil doing this to me? It's not the devil doing it to you. Uh, it's half obedience. You say yes, but you didn't say yes all the way. Mm -hmm. Last time, but last time we checked, oxen was not a sign to carry the ark. The Levites, Jesus, the Levites were responsible to carry the ark. How are you handling Jesus? Your God given assignment and you gave it to animals. Oh, sir. The oh Jesus, uh, let, let me stop. Because I, I feel my preaching anointing coming on me. The reason some of you can't see the glory of God because you are letting animals handle your God given assignment. Uh, Levites, the Levitical priesthood, they were responsible to carry the ark. Not animals. So Levites were responsible to transport the ark. Not just animals. So the ark had to be transported. Not through a cart. The ark had to be transported through poles. They got to. You got to have your Levites carrying the poles on each side to take the presence of God, the favor of God, the purpose of God from one place to another. Oh, but when you study the Philistines, the Philistines, how they transport their God is on a cart because people always want the easy way out. And the problem with you, you are mishandling his presence, his favor, and his purpose because you want shortcuts. Oh, the church wants to do what is convenient. Uh, Jesus, I feel like preaching in here. Convenience will not do it in 2020. So they said, you know what David was like, you know, let's not do it the way it is meant to be. Let's not go back to Numbers 415. Let's not go back to the Levitical priesthood. Let's send all the Levites to vacation and let's hire all the animals to transport the most important thing ever. When you hire mediocre to handle what God has given you, it is an insult to God and it is an insult to your destiny. So what do we do? So now animals are doing the job. So what God said, God said, I'm firing all animals for the rest of this year. That's why God had to shut down the church. Because uh, it's no longer about priesthood. It's no longer about God. So we got animals worshiping. We got animals carrying the ark. We got animals preaching. We got animals prophesying. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. And COVID-19 is the oxen. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me up in here. Let me say that COVID-19 is the oxen for the ark to stumble. And you say, oh, the devil's in this plague. The devil is sent this plague. God sent it to get the animals out so the Levites, the priests, the men of God, the true pastors, the apostles can be in position. Oh God, I wish I had another word for you. So now, Levites were responsible. So David was like, we don't need Levites. Because you know how these Levites get. They're going to have to wear a special robe. They are going to talk to me up in here. They're going to have to spray a special song. They're going to have to be in position. So what the church is saying, I ain't got time for that. Let's put on the light. Let's do what we need to do. And what we need to do is kill an earth. Because why? It's killing the presence of God. It's killing the favor of God. Order, and it's killing the purpose of God. So I said, you know what? 
let, let, let's get this uh, let, let get this thing let get, let, let, let's get this show going because uh, it's performance based uh, let's make sure we get the nice atmosphere but no presence Jesus Christ uh, uh, let, let, let make sure we get the, the right keys uh, the right sound uh, but is it uh, the presence uh, oh God so we are transporting uh, it's like we're putting the presence of God for sale we are uh, y'all gonna talk to me so he says I gotta send the ark I gotta send the ark to what we call an interruption no Easter no Pentecost Sunday no Mother's Day either cancel all weddings because the ark is moving but it's not moving within protocol wow and we label every move as a move of God the Bible says that Satan moved David to number the people we, we, we think every move every altar call is a real altar call so the ark stumbled, and while the ark is falling, this is where some of us here, and that's why this theme is called unbothered. Uh, so Uzzah came out of nowhere to rescue the situation. Uzzah never read Leviticus 4 that simply says it is it was a capital offense to touch the ark. He had no research. All he wants to do is save the world. So Azza came out of nowhere in trying to stop something that he has no anointing, no mentor, no calling. Just like now everyone is an activist suddenly. But you have no calling. You miss ninth grade. No social studies, but you want to be active. Y'all ain't going to talk to me up in here. Uh, Suddenly you are an activist. We have Martin Luther King everywhere on Facebook. Uh, we got us everywhere trying to stop this thing that is falling. An activist means you are active to social issues. Not to be seen. A lot of people are using this platform this moment to be seen. You don't have time for so you don't have a heart for social issues. But you know what? Let me be out there because everyone is a, is a trend. You trendy, but you're not revelatory. So he came to the trend because everyone is, is moving. I'm hopping. Let's stop this arc because it's falling. And if you're gonna survive the next part of the year, and now I'm just talking to our church. And if you want to jump in, jump in. But I got to talk to my people. Praise the Lord. Because they are assigned to me. This is how you're going to live your summer. Unbothered. Why, Pastor? Because you have to know your lane and be okay with it. Oh, shit. This summer, the rest of this year, stay in your lane. Oh my God. Oh no, I'm, I'm prophesying. No, you prophesy. God didn't call me to prophesy. Yeah, you see, the problem is you don't know who you are in Christ. So that's why that's the issue. So everybody want to be everything. You cannot be everything at the same time. You got to stay in your lane. Uh, but uh, you know what? I'm going to preach. No, no, no. God is calling you to be CEO and be happy of being a CEO. You got to stay in your lane. And the problem is, you are operating outside of your lane. Uzza had no mandate, no anointing to touch the ark. Why are you touching something that you have no anointing for? Come on, sir. Oh, but he prophesied so well. Let me prophesy too. Go ahead and prophesy to you. Oh, you know what? He opens the church. Go ahead and do it too. And it's a dangerous thing to follow or be in competition with someone who has the presence of God, the favor of God, and the purpose.
Jesus. Uh, y'all ain't gonna talk to me up in here. So the problem is, uh, some of you are gonna end up dying uh, because you are in competition uh, with the presence of God, uh, the favor of God, uh, and the purpose. Uh, because a lot of you, you are saying, oh, I, I'm gonna do what he's doing. That's not the purpose of God for your life. Uh, so you gotta understand, before you can do him, uh, you gotta find out, is it the purpose of God uh, for my life? Uh, oh, I'm gonna do what he's doing. Second thing you gotta ask yourself, uh, I'm gonna do what she's doing, uh, but is it uh, the favor of God uh, on my life? Uh, Cause when you got favor, stop it, stop it, stop it. Uh, so, so, also, also said, you know what? I gotta touch this thing uh, because it's falling, uh, and some of you, that's what's going on. Uh, Cause. You feel like you gotta fix everything. So can I talk to my church, please? Number one, you have to know your lane and be happy. If God calls me to be an executive, I'm gonna be an executive. Don't sit here and come up here and try to sing. The devil is a liar. If God calls you to prophesy, open up your mouth and prophesy. But don't come up here and try to teach. If God calls you to be a preacher, don't bring me to a workshop. You better get your butt here up here and preach this year God says I'm not using any fake I'm using those who are original so as I feel that I'm called to stop it you can stop a real move of God because sometimes the real move of God is in the chaos so he stopped the chaos he stopped the embarrassment oh my God he stopped the king from seeing what he did uh, so he's trying to stop the ark uh, and he reached out his hands with no one on it uh, oh can I, can I say this uh, he reached out his hands with no anointing uh, because the hand uh, is a representation of power the hand uh, is a representation of importation so what happened with our preachers of 2020 uh, we reach out our hands uh, but we ain't bringing life uh, Jesus so he reached out his hand so can I talk to Rama like church uh, the second thing you gotta know Rama you don't have to die for the world Christ died already so the problem you trying to die for everybody but Jesus took their pain on the cross so he trying to die let me save their marriage let me save their church let it drop it's not your assignment this year it's not called selfish it's called self care if it's not my assignment, I ain't gonna do it. If it's not my calling, I ain't gonna do it. If it's not my job, I ain't gonna do it. Let me go drop. Let hell drop. It's not my assignment. I gotta talk to my church please and the third thing I gotta tell my church not everything deserves your input you don't have to comment on every status y'all ain't gonna talk to me up in here every status is your comment so you got Negroes provoking you provoking your immaturity you gotta learn how to scroll scroll up let Negroes be Negroes, let haters be haters, let hellish be hellish. I'm moving on with God, I'm preaching in God, I'm prophesying in God, I'm buying homes in God, you traveling in God, talk bad all you want, I'm still blessed, talk bad all you want. I got the favor, the battle you want. I got the presence. Unbothered. Head on me. Unbothered. So let's stop this move. So, the fourth thing I gotta tell the church. Because a lot of you, oh, I gotta respond. 
So you start a whole argument on Facebook on a status. All you have to do is Oh, I, I, I'm necessary. You are necessary for the things of God, not foolishness. So I gotta pause here. In the unbothered summer, oh, Jesus, I'm unbothered by COVID-19, I'm unbothered by haters, I'm unbothered. You do you, Sarah Palin, you just do you. And I'm gonna do me in God. So I gotta talk to my church. You don't have to respond to every emergency. That's my number four. And make it your responsibility. Mm. So, he's trying to respond to the emergency. Because there's an emergency. The ark is falling. No, that's not my responsibility. The king should have known that you hired the whole own crew. You hired David, you hired the wrong crew. So this is you. You're having a bad day. Nothing happened to you. Because <laughs> I feel bad, I feel sorry. I, and you're making the emergency now your emergency. So, he's reach out his hand, trying to stop the irresponsibility of David. <laughs> And guess who got killed? Not David, Uzzah. Is it possible that you are getting hurt in the name of help? Mm. Guess who? Out of her husband, out of her house, Uzzah. And a lot of things we do, we do it out of the heart to help, but you end up being killed. Oh, Jesus. So, he trying to help. Such as he did. He started a good thing in the text. Trying to stop the ark from falling. That's a good thing. But just because it's a good thing, doesn't mean it's a God thing. Oh, it's falling. I gotta stop it. So he reached out his hand with no mantle, no anointing, no mandate to stop what's happening. And God struck us up and he died by the, uh, he died by the very thing that he was trying to save. He died by the promise. He died by the presence. He died by the favor by the very thing he's trying to save what are you saying Pastor Maristol and this is my last point to you as we open this subject unbothered because people are going to make you feel that you're selfish you're going to feel that you, you are insensitive no I, I'm preserving my sanity ah, the reason I stopped following you because I'm preserving my sanity. The reason I stopped being in covenant with you, you gossip too much. I, I'm preserving my sanity. So the last thing I want to tell you, you have to stop trying to make the thing that God is not pleased with look good. And that's what happened. It's trying to make what God is not pleased with. At least if I can stop it, it's going to look good. It's not going to be an embarrassment anymore because I stopped it. That's not your job. It's not your job. Oh, you know what? I, I got to stop this church from closing. That's not your job. Pastor, these are the things you need to... That's not your job. Let it drop. It's not your calling. So, Uzzah, reach out and died at the very place at the same location of help and he got hurt and the Bible says that the ark now after it stumbled and David got a woke up call he got a, he got a wake up call and the Bible says that the ark went to Obed for three months and you know what the ark is a representation for one of the things that the ark is a representation for is a representation of favor 
And the Bible says that Obed prospered. Three months. Because wherever the presence of God is, the favor of God, the purpose of God, they ought to be prosperity. Obed prospered. I believe for three months. Maybe that to get now the right way, do it the right way. Uh, get the Levites, get the right protocol. He said, this time we got to move it out. Because David, David saw how Obed was prospering. So what I'm saying to you, what am I saying for five screamers who's watching? What is a liability for others will be a testimony to you. Oh, Jesus. And, and I prophesy to Obed right now. I know the ox stumbled, but when he got to your home, when it gets to your house, it's not going to bring death, but it's going to bring prosperity. What should have been a funeral for others is going to secure your future. I don't know why I need to prophesy, but God said, my presence is coming to your house. My favor is coming to your house. Oh, Obed, you better rise up right now and take the presence of God. Oh, Rabbi Sayah, God allowed it to stumble just for you to get your turn, just for you to get your time. Oh, my God. Now, I want you to release a sound. I want you to release a shout because what the enemy meant for evil, God is going to turn it Uzzah died in the text, but Obed prosper in the text. And this COVID-19 year, I dare you to be the Obed of this year. Karebanda Babasata. Come on, Levite. Help me push Obed to its next level. Help me push Obed to a next level. Obed, you are giving birth. To the presence of God. Obed, you are given birth to the purpose of God. Obed, you are given. Oh, Reba Baba. Karebesoya. Oh, this still is still going to be the best year of your life. What God intended to do, He will do. I'm fully convinced what God meant to do, He will perform. Obed. Uzzah died, but Obed prospered. Hey, Kakabando. Uzzah died, but Obed prospered. This is your season. This is your season. This is your season. Oh, Rebastaya. Come on. Come on, Obed. Death is not coming to your house. Favor is coming to your house. Promotion. Make room. Make room. Make room. Lewis, make room. Oh, Sasha, make room. What the enemy meant for evil. Hey. Oh, I feel a sound. I feel a sound. A sound of deliverance. Get out of the gossip. Get out of the little bar. Unbothered. Come on, Obed. You're not the author of the generation. You are the Obed. Make room for your miracle. Make room for your breakthrough. Make room for your new car. Make room for your fresh anointing. Make room for fresh favor. Reba bakata, reba no bosaya. You shall not die. You shall live, 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 live. Live, oh, live. Fresh wind is blowing on you. The ark. I didn't say pastor is coming. I didn't say your mother is coming. I 
somebody say your father is coming the ark the ark the ark make room for his presence make room for his glory make room for his power yeah oh oh the next six months of this year will be the best month of you make room I'm making room for more glory. I'm making room for more favor. I'm making room for a bigger place. I'm making room for a bigger anointing. Yeah. Make room for your new book. Make room for your new church. his flavor and you're gonna find purpose so right now those of us who say pastor i've been confused i don't know what my purpose is welcome the ark welcome the ark make room make room make room make room make room make room rebel sata you're gonna know what god has called you to do you're gonna know your assignment after this word oh robo make room for his presence I am unbothered not because I'm insensitive because I'm purpose driven I'm heaven focused this summer you gotta make it your responsibility to focus on God <laughs> Jesus you can't please everyone and please God at the same time you gotta make it your responsibility and make up your mind. Are you gonna let the up kill you? Is it your responsibility? You are unbothered. Unbothered. I'm still human. I'm still have I still have compassion. But anything that will bring me out of the will of God, I must divorce this year. If it's confusion, if it's discouragement, if it's people, ungodly covenants, anything that is not bringing me closer to his purpose for my life, I must let go. And letting go is not rejection. Letting go is simply says I'm mature enough to understand that this no longer fit my destiny. Letting go is a place of maturity, not a place of rejection. You have to be strong enough. I speak over your courage to let go. 
I speak over your courage to forgive. Because I can't go to my next level in God. And you have to understand, we gotta make this clear. There is no next level in the absence of God. Your next level that we are talking about is in Christ Jesus. So I'm inviting you right now. You say, Pastor, I need to give, I need to be saved. I need to be saved. I, I, I feel like I'm dying. I am the old that I am the other that you've been preaching about. I am the irresponsible king in the text. I'm making, making room right now for you to reconcile, reconnect, and give your life to Christ. We have intercessors on, on, on staff. We have just inbox us your number. We'll call you. We'll pray for you. You have to be saved. The next six months of 2020 is critical because you're making room for his presence, his favor, and his purpose for your life. You cannot afford to miss June, July, August, September, October, November, and December. You gotta get it right this year. So today is the first day the first is part one of unbothered what are you gonna do with it the ox stumbled is a sign that you need to reflect it's a sign that you need to recalculate and the holy spirit is your gps tonight say recalculate you go the way you're going is not right come back daughter come back son come back preacher come back don't give up god didn't god didn't give up on you why are you giving up? Being confident of this very thing that you has begun a good work is faithful to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. We're about to close. For I understand you are stepping into your season of favor. You are stepping into a season of overflow of his presence and you are stepping into a season of the purpose of God for your life. I still believe what God spoke over Rainbow Life Church. That Rainbow Life Church is a thriving church. Rima Life Church is a blessed church. Rima Life Church is a multicultural church that we have impact and influence not because of who we are, it's because of who we know. And who we know is God. So I'm inviting you right now to release your 10%. Some of you haven't tithed the whole year and how God is going to cover your 90% and rebuke the devourer for your, your sake. And if you don't release your 10%, you cannot be a believer and you are out of business with God. What are you saying? When you are not a tither, you are out of business with God. And God wants to be in business with you. And he cannot be in business with you when you don't give your 10%. Your 10% is a covenant with God. Say, Lord, we in business. You bless me with 100%. I trust you with the 10. So you can bless the 90%. He says, I'm going to rebuke the devourer for your sake. He says, I'm going to open windows when you are a tither. When you are in covenant with your finance. Not praise. <laughs> not preaching. And your finance. Some of you, you are out of covenant in your finances. And God can bless your finances because you are out of covenant financially. How do I get in covenant with God, Pastor? How do I get in covenant financially? I need to be a tither. Just 10%. That's what he's asking. He says, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless your business. I'm going to rebuke the devourer. What should be a recession for you will be a reception for you. Oh, but pastor, people are losing their jobs. We will make sure you prosper. Even in your season of unemployment. But you got to trust him with what you have. You cannot be a member of God's house and you don't tithe. And you attract a curse over your life when you do not tithe. And he cannot rebuke the devourer because what he uses to rebuke the devourer is your tithe. Oh, I got grace. No, it's your time, the 10%. That's when you are in covenant financially with God. You are going to heaven, praise God. But you will never experience overflow on earth if you are not a tithe keeper. 
A tithe keeper is a covenant keeper. Abraham paid his 10%, even Melchizedek paid his 10%. Because if you want God to protect the 90, you have to release the 10%. Rima Life Church is in season of expansion. We are expanding from one campus to another. And God cannot do it without you. Before last Sunday, we preached a message that God is going to increase you a thousand times. And God said, I want you to keep that number till we move to the next church. So I'm challenging you right now, kingdom builders, to release that thousand dollar seed. There are about five of you. Say, Pastor, I got it. Because we are about to move. We are about to go to a new campus. But we cannot do it without you. But you know what, Pastor? I want to be a kingdom builder. Release your $500 seed right now. We start from $500 to $1,000 to $10,000. Release it right now. Release it right now if this is you. Because God is about to bless you a thousand times. There are about five, ten of you are watching. You can do it. God is challenging you right now. Last Sunday I didn't do it, Pastor, but this Sunday, and this is not your tithe, this is your building offering. This is your kingdom ambassador offering. Because you are building his house. Are you going to be a kingdom builder? So now release your thousand dollar seed. I'm making one for you to do it right now. For Cash App, the dollar sign, Rima Life Church. Or you can call this number and text this number. Give to the number 10 on the screen and release your thousand dollar seed right now. Some of you can even go further to 5,000. Go even higher to 10,000. Release it right now. I'm talking to you right now. You cannot be successful in the absence of giving that is impossible if you're gonna inherit success god has to trust you with seed and he only gives seed to the sower so quickly those of us who said you know i pastor i can sow 500 do it right now and put building fund to it pastor i can do a thousand do it right now and put building fund to it. Pastor, I can do 10,000. Do it right now. And put building fund attached to it. I love you. May God bless you. You are unbothered in 2020. You will not be killed in the name of help. Because this year, you will see everything that God has promised you. I love you. Share this live, comment, send it to your friends, send it to your co-workers, send it to your baby daddy, send it to everyone. And let them know that this summer, we are unbothered. I can't wait to see you next Sunday. I can't wait to fellowship with you. I love you, Rima Life Church and our virtual audience. God bless you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you. Be blessed and be encouraged this is not over yet this is just the beginning for you